the new lead us off. Oh, word. Well, I guess we're going to kick this thing off like this. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning or good night, depending on where you're at. You're here for another episode of The Linguistic Show. This is Jason. And hello there. I'm Carol. I'm feeling a little bit subdued right now because as we're getting ready for this extravaganza coming up this weekend, you know, I've got a lot going on and we've been busy. And we've been talking about a lot of different things. And so, um... Basically, what we wanted to do was to kind of wrap our third episode of our accountability series. Yeah. Or the series on accountability, depending on your gra- grammatical uh, needs in that era. <laughs> okay. I call, it the, I call it the accountability series. But anyway, um, you know, we talked about a lot of different aspects of accountability, how to hold yourself accountable, how to hold your partner and your friends accountable, what happens when you know your folks hold you accountable you know all of those type of things and how important those type of things are towards building better relationships better friendships uh better you know work relationships being more productive at work even you know all of those things we talked about all of those things right so what happens next is really where we're going today um after you know you've been held accountable by you know, the powers that be or your significant other or a family member or a friend. Um, what do you do next? How do you react to that? How do you respond to that? Um, also, if you're the person who pointed out something that somebody else did and you're trying to hold them accountable, like, hey, you know, you can't be, you know, you can't be doing that. You can't be acting like that. You got to get better. You got to improve this. Um, how do you respond after you've, you know, delivered that that message of how you felt? Like, are you holding it against them? Are you constantly on them now about what they're doing? Do you consider that a continuation of the accountability or are you really just kind of bothering them about it? Are you, you know? Yeah. Are you uh, almost holding a grudge against them because they got something wrong? And so uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Accountability. What happens next? As, J- as Jason was saying, this is the last part of our series. And so as he and I were thinking about um, our part one and part two, then I was thinking we need to really talk about the the next parts of why, why you should not hold a grudge. Mm-hmm. And so I know that I used to hold grudges. Mm. Among, well, I guess it's not a month. Ten yard but, penalties, but, man. We throwing towards, flags on the amount of holding going on. I mean, she was holding. When yeah, I say she what, was holding, she was holding. Whether it was towards you, whether it was towards people who are not you. Yeah, I could that, name a, I could name a couple, and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to interject, but I just yeah, I did not no like no seriously are, yeah I know I actually did, but it just when you said that just now I just thought of something I just thought of an instance, and I wonder whether that would qualify as what you're referring to. It wasn't involving me. Was it but, involving me? No, no, it was involving you. It, it was involving you and one of your one of your uh, friends slash associates something, and so I just wonder. I mean, we'll talk about that off air, obviously, but I just wonder if uh, you have a different thought process on on that relationship being as though that we're so far removed from so I, from that i think i have a good idea if you're talking about yeah and let me just ask anyway Let's so so no just like so the reason i i had said that i was i was just thinking about an instance um involving something and we've both grown so you much have to tell me offline because i'm wondering what instance because i was a huge grudge holder before mm my major life change and I don't mean me starting menopause <laughs> and you talk about me putting too much information on the I'm damn airwaves I'm a woman airwaves. who's in her early 40s I'm not embarrassed as part of life now if I was in my 20s I'd be like I need to see a doctor but anyhow oh. <laughs> because this ain't right and this ain't normal but um see so we did want to talk about the the next stages of being accountable so yes you have been called out by your partner your spouse your loved one or what have you but then what do you do next um do you just take what they're giving you and receive it and then and try to get better or do you just take it or I mean, rephrase that do you just let it go in one ear out the other and then 
you get mad at at him or her for what they've done. So I've done all of this. I've, ah! done, I've done A, All B, of the C, above. Yes. All of the above was her answer. So like the in, answer is E. Yes, ah, all of the above. All of the above. So like personally, in my case, like I've I've always been one of those type of people that I try to accept the constructive criticism. I really do try to live the golden rule lifestyle. Like you know what I mean. Like uh, if I want people to listen to me when I have something to say, I gotta listen when they got something to say. And so I do try to take it to heart. Um, I know a lot of times it might have come across like I'm shutting down, like I'm not saying that, I'm not talking. And it's really me just trying to focus on, you know, improving on those type of things based on uh, me being held accountable. And so that's something that I learned kind of in my work environment that is like, you know, if somebody took the time to point out something you're doing wrong or ways that you can improve, then you probably should jump on that um, and find ways but to why improve. why should you? Oh, okay, so, so, so let me just, I guess, play uh, angels. Oh, angels advocate. You're yes, going to adv- play <laughs> angels talking. advocate. Yeah, so, oh, you're going to play uh, angels advocate. Bad. There, here you go. Yeah, oh, my gosh. So, um, how are you going to play angels advocate on that one, ma'am? Okay, because I personally have grown a whole lot. And so, some of these things I have learned from you. And so, they don't all apply to me. But people may not be to my level of accountability because hey. I was I won't give a number but I was very very low because I thought that even though I wasn't perfect because no one is I, I just was not used to being held accountable in certain regards and so my father actually <laughs> pulled me aside virtually and said Carol are you sure and I don't agree and so I and so we, we did talk separately I told him that that's not anything that you're thinking about it's, it's about small things like keep your room clean about like why didn't you wash these dishes so it wasn't major things it was the the um it was the day to day yeah, stuff yes yeah, so it was mainly stuff. that i was referring to on the podcast so because do you want to clarify type, that dad? because Love you know you, no, no because uh, i get where you're coming from and from a father's perspective i could hear how that would come across what you mean you got in trouble plenty of times Basically, what you mean i was, remember when you i did this and you did that yeah, and, and so then this is how i we but, did talk about that but but <laughs> um no i get that and and, and part of uh, adulthood as you realize once you get there mm. is that those little day-to-day things is what you're actually really blessed that you learned like for me personally i'm really blessed I learned I learned a lot of inside the house like how to take care of myself stuff based on the fact that I spent a lot of times as a latchkey kid with my brother Woo-hoo, latchkey family yeah, right Woo-hoo. so so like you know me and my brother is seven years younger than me so you know I learned how to cook and clean and take kind of take care of the house and do some things like that which I'll, obviously when I was an adult I knew how to take care of myself where I knew guys who like when they were adults like literally eat cook takeout every single night because they don't know how to cook or have to take their clothes to dry dry clean because they don't know how to do laundry like there's people like that that live like that out here like they just don't know how to do basic stuff now i'm not talking about what i consider basic stuff like how to change a tire or how to change a light bulb like i consider that stuff basic stuff but even to that extent i feel as though i'm blessed by being held accountable for little things like that like knowing that i had to take out the trash knowing that those dishes had to be done knowing that i had to get my laundry done and folded and put away you know what i'm saying growing up in a small house and in an apartment we ain't got time to have your laundry just sitting around willy-nilly you you holding up the party like you gotta get your shit well, yeah i can see it you gotta get your shit you get to it together keep it going and, uh, and not just that though as it pertains to like vacuuming and doing the dishes and keeping like certain things in the house clean it doesn't have to be perfect but it always had to kind of just be away and oh, yeah, whatever and that helped me a lot in my my life as a young adult and then also as an adult now being married is that i hold my to a certain standard and there are times where you may feel as though like I'm like oh the house ain't like this but it's just like nah like I hold myself to a standard this is my house I gotta get my accountability won't let my personal accountability right. won't let me let the house be disheveled is what I'm saying it, it just won't let me oh, right now. It, and it, when it does get that way it affects my mood so much and then I just like shut down I don't talk to nobody because I'm cleaning and doing all, all the things at right. the same time I'm cleaning and doing laundry and cooking dinner and raking the leaves and cutting the grass and painting the house all at the same time because I want to hold myself accountable for letting it slip. And so that's why I was saying that at times you can't always hold, have a grudge, like how 
how Carol said, you can't always hold a grudge. You can't always like yes, you were held accountable. Like if wifey was like, damn, why did you why ain't you uh, do the laundry? You was home today, and it's just like she's right. I should have did the laundry if it was my day off. I should have, you know what? I see the damn basket over there. I see that John got one more sock on it before it tips over like the lean and sour pizza. No, I'm not. Our basket's not like that now. I'm just using it as an example. It's just like you, I see that, but I didn't do it. And and then when she holds me accountable, sometimes I have a tendency to be like, oh shit, and I shut down because I'm like, young, she's right. And then I get on like business mode. Yes, I, and, and then you get on turbo, and, I, and then I tell you like, you don't have to do all. Of, why am I getting so loud? Mm. <laughs> because I'm getting passionate. Because, because it's bad. You're passionate because it matters. Because <laughs> it matters. Yeah, but this, that was my my gadget watch ringing. It wasn't my girl. that. Dude, go go gadget watch. Yeah, so I have a gadget watch. Oh, like, mine doesn't ring. Like you were saying, like when you have been held accountable. Okay, now let me go back. You have demonstrated. Demonst- 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 you have demonstrated such a admirable way of just receiving feedback and receiving what I say, whether I say it in the loving way, the tough love way, the in-between way. And so I give you lots of kudos. Is that correct? Kudos and props and and all that that because you have done a phenomenal job and I don't know whether it's because of things that that you went through um, when when you're growing up or just how you were just raised or maybe it's a combination but you have done a phenomenal job and you have been a great example to the kids of how to handle feedback. Some of the, some of the, them don't always understand and listen, but everyone what I know is different. But I will say for the podcast world, for those of you who are in America and also those of you overseas, he's done a great job of not letting things affect him in a way that we can see. And so not saying that you hold it in all the time because at times you don't, at times you do. But I will say you have done a great job of just being accountable. Well, let me that comes it. from. That come to be fair. That comes from a place of humility, and uh, one of the things that I was thinking when we talked about accountability and some of our earlier episodes, and I didn't have the time to get it out there, is that you have to be willing to accept it. Um, there's a lot of people who, you know, you could hold them accountable. You tell them, "Yo, that ain't right," and they were like, "And they be oh, like, well, oh, well, 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 I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do what I want to do anyway." And so it ain't my fault. Yeah. Did I do that? You know, yeah. those kind of people are really problematic. And, you know, I'm not necessarily recommending burning bridges, but that's the type of person you can burn, bomb, destroy the bridge, don't rebuild it, divert the river, the whole nine yards. Like, don't go back to people who won't accept accountability. I'm not saying that they don't accept it your way, but have never, ever, ever, ever accept it so um yeah like i said i think it comes from a place of humility because i've always thought you know there's places i can improve there's places i can be better i've never thought that i you know i've never carried myself like i'm i'm all that like i got like i got it all going on and i got everything figured out i always felt like i could be better and so um that's why i've always felt like it's important to accept accountability for my actions or for what i do or don't do or don't do well enough or do good i mean it's also like you know taking compliments that's what something I've been told that I don't accept compliments either. So like I accept accountability, Take but don't but don't accept compliments, which is weird. But um, I guess what I'm saying is, yeah, no, I appreciate what you're saying. Um, I am I, I do make it a point that if you tell me like, yo, you got to change this, I change it. You know what I'm saying? There's a couple of hills I die on right over the years, but, but it was but, way less than me. And I have definitely learned about just being more open. And so we are kind of on topic, but I, st- but we got a little bit off the path a little bit because because we want to just talk about the. That's her holding me Apollo. accountable. That's her holding me accountable. She's holding me accountable for getting off track. Just just a little bit. I live on the margins. <laughs> I like the tangents. I catch the tangent train often, and we don't know when it's coming back to station. Well, I'm going to just put the, yeah, so let's bring it back to the station. So with, with this episode, we really want to focus on the apologizing and then... And then also not holding the grudge. And so you had touched on it um, um, earlier that that the grudge holding is 
from the person who was called out in this case for example me and, and then also for for you the person who held me accountable but then I got mad but then getting mad at me so it's it's about it's a two-way street as you were saying during our planning session for the episode and so I am very I have been very accountable way more than I was when we first got married and even um, um, even in the earlier parts of, uh, parts of our marriage but the the biggest thing that really changed me and how I think about just not holding a grudge and and also um, just 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 realizing that then that saying I'm sorry or having an apology doesn't make you weak was when Ashley was born and so I know we would do an episode eventually about that whole situation but but for me that was a major life a major life changer because when I when I'm told um as, as a mother that your child was still born and revived and then just being depressed for at least two to three years and not even knowing it, I was depressed until two years after that that really helped me just to value what people say and do in a way that 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 is with love opposed to taking things um so um personal and um in such a negative way so i know for first hand that i would be mad you know, for days or i won't say weeks every single day but but my being mad wait a minute wait a minute wait. how can you be face. how can they i know that's why i have to say it that's why I, had, I know that's why i had to say it. how could you be mad for weeks every single day no no i'm saying that it was not mo yeah. how can babe how can you be mad for weeks every single day <laughs> That's what you no, said. No, we're just going to continue. We're just going to continue. Okay. I'll hear it. We're I, just going to continue. Because when, yeah, cause, cause when you said that, I was just like, bro, damn, that's vicious. Okay, so that every me, single day, you're mad for weeks. So that means the joint don't never stop being mad. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So maybe I did say that, which I'm going to hear back in the edits. <laughs> but what I was trying to say yes, is, is that even though I may not have been mad every single day of those weeks, mm. my my being upset overall lasted for a couple of weeks. That, so like, right. I'm saying that wasn't every single day, but I'll be, I'll be maybe okay for two days. You trigger me for like the tiniest, minuscule, minute thing that like normally would have not bothered me at all, but it would set me off and then I'll be mad again at the thing I was mad at before that one minor thing. So, so that's what I mean in terms of it lasting for weeks, but not every single day during those weeks. And so they cannot see you nodding. And so maybe I guess you can give up. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's right. Because they can't see your face. <laughs> All they hear Accurate. is your sigh. Accurate. 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 And so, you know, since, since you and I have both grown so much during our relationship, whether it's before marriage or then after, I am definitely very, very, very cognizant of the fact that I was not someone who was easy to, easy to be married to because I just would not receive criticism whether it was constructive or whether it was like do do this or change that I, so I wasn't hearing anything it's not just it's not just uh, it's not just that you weren't hearing anything is that you were also telling everybody else everything else so that part is where that's where that was kind of hard to deal with it's not just that you weren't hearing it or receiving it is that you were giving out all the accountability okay okay i hear what you're saying like when you give out all the accountability but take none in return that's tough but yes people have grown things have changed and that's something that we've learned from in our past yeah and you're right um, i have said this before to you um a couple of years ago and off and on because i don't think about it um, a lot anymore but you would get upset when I would tell you that at work I'm very accountable I would own my mistakes without an issue but but at home I was very hesitant to own it and so I don't know what that's called in my mind I don't know why I was I, I don't know why it was that way but you would get mad at me or mad maybe isn't the word but you would get bothered when I would say that at work I'm different at work I will own a mistake if someone says no Carol this should have been typed up this way. I'll be like, okay, I'll fix it. And there was no issue as far as like being upset. And so I'm happy that we have had the ability to just grow by talking and communicating a whole lot better. 
than we did early on in our marriage. So I'm able to apologize without my chest hurting. Uh, I'm serious. Oh, uh, like and the thing is, is have you ever seen any I of those memes or the videos <laughs> where where women like are scared of the the a word? Yeah. And like like literally get chest pains when they apologize. Like they can't even like you you apologized. Like what? Like they they excommunicate you out the women's club if you apologize to a man, especially your man. You can't apologize to your man. They excommunicate you. It was never about it was never about me trying to follow suit or whatever um, wives or or women are doing. It was just me personally, Carol Bush, who did not want to apologize to you, Jason Bush, because I thought that that would make me weak, and so that was very ignorant of me, of course, to think that me apologizing, whether I say I apologize for X Y Z or I'm sorry that I did so and so. Just that, that that whole concept to me, when it came to to us, was something that I knew should be done. But I just physically had trouble doing it. Like my chest would hurt. I would get hot. I would get like tense just by having to admit that I was wrong. Now, do you think that came from a position of you admitting that you were wrong to me? Yes, yes to you because I. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing now, but, but but it's not funny because they can't see your face any. They can't see your face. So. <laughs> no, that's the Duce talking. So, My face is the Duce talking. Like, so it's I'm, it's the holiday season. We're we're Holly and we're Mary today. So let's keep pushing. I'm I'm laughing not because of what I did was funny in terms of how I just would not apologize, but 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 I'm laughing at the fact that I was I was not. You're, I was you're not laughing at the, form, the former that, version of yourself. Yes, you and your former form. I was not form. mature enough to just realize that me saying I'm sorry for doing something doesn't uh, mean that I'm weak. And so I'm definitely past that part of my life. So let me when ask you this. You let me I. ask you this, though. So, like, I'm, 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 I'm wondering. No, I'm seriously, I'm wondering okay. if. Come on, don't give me the Sam Cassell ears. I'm oh. wondering. She poked her ear out looking like. Oh, they can't see me. Elf ears. Um. <laughs> I'm wondering if that thought process of feeling like you're weak if you apologize would be why you would get upset where if I apologize for something, you would be like, oh, no, you're not really apologizing. You just, that's your pattern. You do something bad, then you apologize and hope it go away. And it's like, nah, Slim, well, like I'm realizing I did some shit wrong and I'm verbalizing it. That's that's something that, that I it took me a year, I don't know how many years, it took me time just to realize that 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 our styles of apology well I didn't apologize to anybody oh <laughs> so your style was not a style <laughs> oh shit so, uh, <laughs> she ain't even had no apology yeah. style they just don't do it that's the style yeah I, I, I didn't, you're right because, her car don't have no reverse gear that shit is all gas mo no brakes no reverse we going forward <laughs> I would apologize okay <laughs> I would, I would acknowledge things at work that I did wrong, but right. you, you would not. I've already, nah, Carol but, don't but, make no but, mistakes on Summer Hill Road. <laughs> Carol don't make I knew no that mistakes I would make mistakes, on Summer Hill Road. <laughs> I would. Okay, so I'm laughing again because I was not mature enough to realize that I am holding us back by not being able to apologize, and so I would apologize in my head to you for what I did to you, but then I would still be upset at you. Hey, so fellas, I, I need everybody <laughs> to record this. Remember this? Like, I'm literally, I had to take my glasses off, take my hat off. Like, she not only apologized, she's admitting that she was wrong for not apologizing. This is a yeah. first. You yeah, heard it. You, know, you heard it me. here it's first. first. Look, she's looking at the timestamp on the computer. You heard it's it. Not here. a first. No, I'm not saying it's a first. I'm saying this is a first in the history of male female relationships. Not that not story. only are you apologizing, you're apologizing for not apologizing correctly. Yes. Holy I can, cow! I can acknowledge that <laughs> that like me number one not apologizing after being held accountable by you for whatever it was was holding us back from growing as a couple but I can also acknowledge readily to maybe help help um, someone else who maybe was or is how I used to be to be like I would not apologize I would not acknowledge out loud to you that that yes you were right by calling me out on, on, on whatever it was I would acknowledge it 
to myself soon after be like so so in my thoughts I would I would definitely like say like yeah you were right but but like the the thought of me verbalizing that I uh, just the thought it, of you verbalizing that I was right I I could you already you know me probably years I cannot do that toxic so this is toxic before toxic if relationships were even a thing and we survived that shit though we're in here laughing about it having a drink because like enjoying a box like we're I yeah was, that was really messed up of me to just be that kind of person and so going back to my major life change having Ashley in 2013 and then being depressed by the whole the, 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 the whole scenario of Ashley was born really changed how I feel about people so I don't hold a grudge against people whether it's you, whether it's friends, former friends, associates, or, 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 or whomever, I don't hold a grudge. I, I am not vindictive anymore, thank God, because that was who I was. Because I just had that whole thing of I cannot apologize out loud. So rather than me do that, let me get mad at you and let me drill it in. Whether it's you, whether it's a friend, now former friend, because I had moved on with them. But I can definitely own that I was that person. So, I find turn it... Over to you. So, <laughs> you gotta turn the mic over to me. I gotta talk anytime I felt like I'm just not the trying to interject and interrupt nice anymore. Mm -hmm. So, um, I feel like this is something that I want to dig deeper into um, specifically I on know, how... Part four? Like, no, not necessarily. <laughs> like, no, like, not, 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 not necessarily on accountability, but on how, you know, it's something that we were going to touch on when I have my episode with the fellas on how, you know, our relationships with our dads have, you know, shaped our fatherhood experiences. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if, like, your relationship with your parents and seeing how their relationship went shaped the way that you treated me early on. And that's I feel like that's I feel like that's something we could talk about at a later time because I feel like that is important. I feel like a lot of times the way my parents acted in their relationship shapes the way I treat you quite often. And um, you know, I I still kind of think about that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And you know, my parents' relationship wasn't perfect by any means, but I, I you know, they stuck it out. Yeah, I just wonder if whether or not um, you know, my relationship with my parents, you know, and seeing how their relationship was and your relationship with your parents mm -hmm. and seeing how their relationship was kind of framed the way that we both treated each other. And I do feel as though that's an important thing that we can talk about on another episode. That's I funny. feel like that's actually really important because I feel like especially talking to some of my friends in the, who are still out in the dating pool and uh, seeing how things go with their significant others. I have one friend in particular who I, I be you know, hearing how he talks about it. And it's almost exclusively like he's trying to not find his mom and he keeps finding his mom. Okay. You know you know what yeah. I'm saying? I have you know what I'm saying? Kind of and so it's, it's like, like he's trying to, your mom. He, he's he's trying your mom. not to find his mom. He's trying not to be his dad. Mm -hmm. He's trying to ele say. elevate above their circumstance mm -hmm. and just keeps bumping into the same stuff. And so like it's something that we touched on at one point having a few drinks at the bar a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And so um, um, anyway, like I do, I do think that that would be important as, you know, people up in our 40s that we've been married for a while, we've known each other for a while, and we've been through a lot of shit. I think that that's an important bit of perspective for the young perspectives relationship people out there who might be listening or for the ones who are just in relationships, older, yeah. who are in relationships and haven't been in a relationship as long as us. Like, you know, I think that that's something important to talk about, like how you might project your parent situation onto yours. That's a good since that since, since that's the uh, you know your first model. example yeah. outside of TV. Why are you apologizing? Like, why are you no? You don't get to just say you're sorry and it go away. I'm mad at you. Right, and, wa right. and walk away and be mad at me for two weeks. And if I even mention any of my friends' names, oh, that's no. why you're out in the streets all night. And so, like, that's what I'm saying is like I'm glad we've grown past that. So. I'm glad that uh, we can bring that up, though, because I feel like that's important, and it goes both ways. A lot of times, I feel like that kind of thing can be skewed towards the men. Mm -hmm. Like, the men are held to a different standard, like the women hold a grudge for some shit that happened 15 years ago. But men act the same way, too. And I feel like... You hold grudges, too? Not that we hold what grudges, because you, you know me personally, like I said. Okay. 
not not you. Me personally, oh, I'm a bad you. example. I'm a bad example because I really do wake up every single day. You never know what could happen. It's a world of possibility. Let's see what happens. I really do try to focus on that every day. I advise everybody. I know it's hard. There's lots of stuff going on in the world and in your personal lives too. But I really do advise you for your own personal well-being and your mental health. Yes. Take a step back and treat every day like a fresh day. Don't hold grudges. Don't hold things against people that aren't active things that are going on. Like if you've got a business deal that's going on or something and you're holding that person accountable because you're in the middle of this deal and you need things to get done, okay, continue with it. But yo, if somebody does you wrong, you either forgive them or you don't. You hold them accountable. But you gotta move on because life is too short. And I am someone who is here to tell you because it happened to me and a bunch of my very close relatives. You cannot be in a situation where you are holding something back that you wanted to say or you're like feeling like um, you never got to mend this relationship or whatever because people will be gone. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm saying that because I'm in my 40s and I've seen a lot of people pass who are close to me in the last three years. And not just, I'm talking about family, I'm talking about friends, I'm talking about classmates, I'm talking about like lots of people that I've known who have passed for lots of different reasons, natural reasons, the streets, all kinds of stuff, random accidents. Like, it's sad as hell. And so, I really, really do value everybody who's been a part of my life, who has helped me be the man that I am. And that's why I don't hold these grudges. That's why even if I think about some shit that may have happened when we was in high school, and, you know what I'm saying, maybe you were never held accountable back then for that shit in our friend group. Here go the thing. I'm not finna treat you fitty just because I thought about what happened back then and just like, nah, fuck that nigga, I can't go hang out with them, fuck that. But to a certain extent, I know better now. You know what I mean? Right, like yeah. I, you, I'm, I'm like W. You fool, you fool me once. You, you can't fool me again. <laughs> like, like I'm like W. So, so yeah. Yeah, you get the, you gotta get the little sound, sound, bite? The little sound yeah. bite. Fool me once. Uh, they got an old saying in Texas. I'm like, come on, W. <laughs> Come on, man. Like after a while, I started to root for W because I'm just like, man, he's definitely in a, he's definitely playing out of position. They put him in a bad <laughs> spot. They put him in a bad spot. He's like a six foot two center. Like, what are you doing, bro? Like, why you put W in there playing in in the paint with the big boys? You're right, right. Bringing it back. Yes. I'm on them tangents again. You're, so you're there you over go. here. You need to be over here. Anyway, what I'm getting at is yes. Uh, Accept that accountability, understand that, you know, you can, you can look at situations for what they are, but my advice just for what has helped me over the years, and I've had a lot of crazy stuff happen to me, don't, don't get me wrong, but a lot of people, if you didn't know that about me, wouldn't know that about me, because I don't go on and on about how people have done me dirty. You're right, you don't do that. I go on and on about how people have blessed me. And so, that being said, that's what I would recommend for folks. Now, granted, the people that do done me dirty, I'm not going to let them do me again. Because either either you learn and then you just you have distance. You avoid them scenarios going it was, forward. It's not a, yeah. So, I got it. So, yeah. So, like I said, like, you know, you, 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 avoid. you, you avoid those situations and you, uh, you, you know what I'm saying, you learn so that you won't be in them situations going or forward. Or you just realize that, hey, okay, lesson learned. You're out of my life, and it's it's what's the phrase? No harm, no foul. Probably, probably the wrong context. Well, well, yeah, no blood, no shoot. foul. Like or, or, yeah, that whole no thing, harm, no that whole thing. Yeah, no, nah, I play ba- I play football and basketball. So Whatever no the actual blood, phrase no is, like you were saying, you can choose to use that as. Oh, as what I was saying learn. before was like, yeah, like or there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with bye-bye. burning bridges, and and you know I'm not the type of person to be like cut people off, but yo. You got to protect your own <laughs> mental health. I know you are. And so if they don't if they if they don't serve your if mental health. If it's not health, balanced. Yeah, if, if it's, it's not balanced. One side and it shows to be one side over and over again. I I Oh my god, it took me so long not. to learn that. It took me so long to learn yeah. that in my life. I have no problem with letting mm. letting someone go, but 
what I have been able to do. That's a word, is, babe. I took me but, so long in my life to learn that. Like, once people show you who they are, you know what I mean? Do you learn from that and allow them to keep taking advantage of you? Or do you put your foot down and, and yeah, like... And it's not always taking advantage. It was more so of, of, of me being able to go back to not holding a grudge and so what I would do when I did not want to keep going with someone because she bothered me or said something or, 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 or whatever the case yeah I would make it a point to make sure she knew how I felt about her and then I then cut her, her off and then, and, then, and, then, and then cut her I would make sure what order it was you like, always get the last word that's another episode that's coming <laughs> later this year so. it's like the last word trust me when I tell y'all you don't need the last word, fam. Sometimes the last word is silence. Oh! Well, I'm going to have to finish my Ooh. point, though, because I was still... Sometimes the best last word is silence. But yes, you can finish your point. Thank I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I keep I keep plugging these future episodes because my marketing cap... I had my marketing cap on today um, on, my other, on my other side business. So, stuff. okay. On my so, other stuff. I'm sorry. Okay, so back with the grudges... Since I have gotten so much better at not even doing that anymore, mm -hmm. what I would do is, is if I did learn you know, that that someone you know, said things that I just wasn't feeling or just was 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 um, acting in a way that I didn't want to be part of, I would make it a point because I was vindictive back then and I was a grudge holder. I make it a point to let them know how I felt about them. I didn't say it nicely. I didn't curse them out, but I would, I was, I would tell them how I feel, and then feel no guilt, and then, and then at that point, I would then cut them off. So now, the, those kind of things still happen in terms of maybe being a, a people showing me uh, who they are. But what I do now is just let it go, like the movie Frozen. I can't sing well, so I wouldn't try to sing, but like. Frozen, just let it go without even me trying let to. Let it go. You know, let it go. I'm sorry. Yeah, so. Yeah, you shouldn't have said singing that Frozen damn song with our daughters, knowing that we had to live Frozen for like four years. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah, so oh now I can just let it go and. And then be at peace, knowing the knowing that I was a good friend to you know to, to certain people, and then if it ends, it ends. I mean, I could be sad, and I'm thinking about a, a, a one person from several years ago, and, and I was like, and I was really crushed. But but I know that that me personally, because I gave my best effort to try to get it resolved, so rather rather than at the hold a grudge, I can. I can peacefully say you know, that I tried. We had a fantastic friendship for 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 well, I guess several years, and now there's all what's the phrase like there's a season there's a no, not the, I the reason. No, no, it's, you mean that? No, no we're that, not talking about the reason. That oh. certain people are, are in your life for a season. For, so yeah, they're just, you're in a different season of your life. life. You're in a different season yeah. of your life yeah. now. So no, I, so I, I have I no problem that. applying that. And so, I mean, I wish them well. And so, so if I see her, I'll speak. I mean, actually, I did see her and, and I spoke and it was odd, but yeah. Ah! It was odd. Because yeah, I'm thinking, um, you're acting like everything's kumbaya, and we haven't seen each other <laughs> oh, in part. like a decade. And that so, part. Oh, yeah. yeah I so, remember that story. And he, they cannot see you. Oh no! I'm just you. You shouldn't have said the seasons because now that song is in my head now, and it's it was and it, it won't was the disappear. fact that people are in your life for a certain season, a certain reason. That's what I was trying to get. Love it for. when it rhymes. Love it when it rhymes. I like, like rhyming that. alliteration Love it when as it well. Rhymes like that bars. Now, oh my God, what time is it? It might be about that time for the number one game show that is sweeping the nation. Woo! I heard, I heard, I've heard research that says that this is the number one game show that is sweeping podcasts that begin with an L <laughs> on the name of their title. So I got to tell you that this is lit. Like you got to get with that goddamn wordplay. Hey, that's where you insert the horn noises. <laughs> Okay, well, you just did it with your mouth, so that's good. So, for those of you who are turning... Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, 
So for those for of, those of you who are turning a certain age, are you turning for those like they're, of they're you, one year listeners, so they're one year olds? Is so that what for those doing? of you who are tuning in for the first time hey. since our our summer break. So yeah, what is wordplay, right? So <laughs> wordplay, I got a big crazy Merriam Webster's dictionary, right? It's got it's pretty long. It's got like three thousand pages. <laughs> And so it's like it's got shit you didn't even know was words in there that's actually words. And so what we do, we just I, I spit out a letter, she pe- she closes her eyes, picks a word in that letter, and then I gotta try to figure out what that is during the time frame. Is the time frame arbitrary? Yes. Yeah, Are we holding each other accountable for the time frame Ooh. in even in the accountability <laughs> episode? Not really. No, not really. <laughs> is it funny as hell? every time so here we go my letter today since my wife has the dictionary in her hands i'm ready i'm prepared insert your jeopardy theme music now with the time frame my letter today in honor of the christmas season and all of y'all fellow sneakerheads who know me and know that i'm a bit of a sneakerhead and this is the christmas season so there's only like 38 billion 50 11 different releases that have come out in the last like seven to eight days and guess what i've been getting all the time l's 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 all l's so my letter today is l to represent my sneakers reservations my my new balance reservations my Foot Locker app all of that anybody got them ugly duckling uh air max ones in a size 12 hit me up please Okay, so you are picking L. L's, because I got an L on my ugly ducklings. Another, this happens almost mm. every episode. Hit me with it, L. What is it? It's, this is too easy. Don't matter. That's the word you picked. Length. Length? Ooh. Yes. Length. Length or length. Like cue, you cue the, put cue a the, G in cue there. The, cue the saucy music. We're talking about length today. Length. I'm still at you like come on man. It's a measurement of how long something might be. Like, Woo! Easy word. Boom, boom, boom. You're gonna switch your sen- what's your I'm easy sentence. Use it in a oh sentence. my, this is too easy. The length of my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> meant that I had to buy 25 different brick pavers. You didn't think that I was going to say that when I said the length of my... Well, I knew dot, that, dot, that dot. you're going to make it dot, dot, somewhat. Dot, dot, dot. dot. That like was the this. pause. That was the, the length of my dot, dot, dot driveway. <laughs> Dude, that was too easy. Woo! Jason wins again at Wordplay. Yeah, but it, I haven't been gone. How are you going to win with I haven't gone? Because I got the definition and in a sentence. Because it was mad easy. What well, don't matter. That's not how this works. Don't hold yourself accountable. Pick I a better am. word. Okay, so so just to be in unison, <laughs> in unison with you, I would choose L as well. Oh, man. L is for what? L is, for, L is, for, is for that llama that was loose in Fairfax. Hey, Mo, why was there a llama? <laughs> Young, I need all y'all people in the DMV stop buying weird animals, dog. Zebras, Why was there a, a llama loose in Fairfax. in Fairfax County today? What in God's... Yes, llamas in Fairfax, Virginia, and a zebra in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Mm-hmm. That's the funniest, is the zebra in Upper Marlboro. That's lit. And nothing gonna <laughs> be zebra loose farm. in Upper Marlboro. <laughs> For all y'all from out of town, y'all just don't get it. Ain't nothing like seeing a zebra loose in the suburbs. It just don't make sense. Nope. Mm. All right, so she's going L's, right? Come on, big money, big money, make it an easy word. Come on, whammy, no whammy. (laughs) All right, since you're a hypochondriac, you probably. And you're a hypochondriac. We haven't even talked Listen, about the episode yet, but yeah, since you are a hypochondriac, and and? I, and I made sure that your little fine ass graduated. I mean, excuse me, that your little fine ass passed linguistics class I in your freshman on year. Time, I made I- sure. <laughs> I made sure she got an A in linguistics class because she was heavily distracted. What was my word? By yours truly. Your word today, this is ridiculous, but I know you're going to be able to, to get the root in the whole nine. I, I can't so. believe I pointed to this joke. What's the word? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to pronounce it. Re- relax. Fine. Oh, my goodness. Lymphangeography. Lymph. Lymph. And the ge- lymph and geography. Lymph and geography. Got it. Easy. Do you need me to spell it? Nope, I'm good. Lymph and now geography. Now I'm good. Okay, go. 
Okay, it was lymphangiography. Lymph or lymphinography. Lymphangia lymphangi so it's not G O with an E. Lymphangiography. Got I, get, I don't know if I you would pronounce it Gi or G, but okay. lymphangiography. Here. I don't know how that's the word I pointed at. Because it's just random. Because that's just random. So using context clues and using root words. Yes, linguistics. I'm going to say that this is the study of people's lymph nodes you are so close not just study <laughs> not just study but, but what but what but the study of people's lymph, no lymph nodes based on where they live what kind of no 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 not geography what kind of study the study of the lymph nodes all right pete you, got, you ready <laughs> no. you ready for the definition yes please. all right pete enlighten me please X-ray depiction of lymph vessels and nodes after use of radio opaque material called a lymphonography. So basically, if you have lymph nodes that may be infected or mm -hmm. might be cancerous, it's an X-ray of your lymph nodes. So a lymph, what is uh, lymph in a, a lymph in geography? Is the actual a lymph and geography or mm -hmm. geography? It doesn't. You know how the di dictionary is. I don't feel like pronouncing it because I had some do set. Um, it's the X-ray of your lymph nodes. It's the it's the study of the X-ray of your lymph nodes. Okay. So if you had if you had your little lymph node in your neck that right there was starting to swell up or whatever, and you're like, oh my god, what the hell is that on my neck? And you went to the doctor and they did an X-ray of it. That's a lymph and geography when is the study the the of the x-ray of your lymph nodes because the actual actual x-raying of it is called a lymphonography okay I heard a that lymphonography is would be when you would go to get your lymph your lymph node right, wherever whichever lymph node it might be to actually have it x-rayed so that was an interesting word. Look at me using root words of context. Hey, words. I still win because I got the definition <laughs> yeah. and a sentence. Why do you use it a sentence? Because you're not going to use it in a sentence. Because who good. the hell is going to say lymphogenography? I'm good off that. Ain't nobody using that. I be feeling like they put words in the dictionary just for us to write and report and not to actually say out loud. Well, That's an episode for another day. But, but I really be feeling like... what you do for your career. In, I guarantee it ain't no daggone doctor saying a lymphogenography. I bet there is if they're in the medical realm, if they're in the medical world. No, nah, they, they're going to say, we took an x-ray of his lymph nodes. That's what he going to say. We took an x-ray of his lymph nodes, and then we <laughs> studied them lymph node x-rays. That's what he's going to say. He's not going to say, I took a lymphogenography to study <laughs> the lymphonography. <laughs> He's not going to say that. Yeah. And I will go find the person that I know very closely who works in the medical field. And I will ask, Let's, I yes. will ask him Let's what they would say. Would they say when you're at the ask damn hospital Friday. wearing your scrubs and your Crocs, would you say, oh. I'm going to get a lymphogenography for the, 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 the all the technical shit? Or are you going to say, hey, Mo, he got to get an x-ray on his lymph nodes because the one joint swollen. We're gonna ask him oh, that. I, oh, in, yes, in, in I can't wait. Days. I can't and, wait for that. Hopefully, hopefully, I hope he's listening I to this. I don't forget. I hope he's listening to this and you can respond because I'm very curious about that one. I'm curious. Now you done piqued my interest. I'm curious about that one. Yeah, so thanks everyone for tuning Thank in. Thank you. This Thank you for tuning in. Please check us out on, on Spotify, Spotify and Anchor, Stitcher and Anchor and, and the website. And the website. And if you're in your car, check this out. So the other day, I was driving Carol's car because I had to drive her car for something. And my car my car is new, but it's old school. It's got an old school vibe. So without long story short, like I just Bluetooth and play my music right through YouTube, whatever. So Carol car, I want to play something on Spotify. Oh, that whole ordeal. I wanted to play I wanted to play yeah, something okay. on Spotify. But Pete, it was so seamless to just play Spotify shit in Carol Carr using the mic button on her little steering wheel. Oh, yeah. So all y'all with these relative all y'all with these relatively new cars, all y'all gotta do is say, hit that little button, play the linguistic show. Boom! You gonna listen to this John while you driving. I never thought about that. Play the linguistic show. I like that. You should sure like that. That's what we do. We it's the marketing I love Man, that. what? So yeah, like yes, so Spotify you know you, if is. you got Spotify or Stitcher or all any of those other things installed on your phone and you might have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, whatever it is for your phone and your car, and you got a relatively new car, just hit that little microphone button in your car, play the linguistic show and see if we pop up. Ask Alexa. Alexa might just <laughs> 
If you've got Spotify hooked to your Alexa, mm -hmm. ask Alexa, hey Alexa, play the linguistic show. I like that. You man, what? So thanks everyone for Check tuning us out. in. Yeah. Thanks everybody for tuning in. God bless you. Good night. If you enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, and share to the linguistic show. This has been an Ashangali Enterprises production. Co-produced by Naomi. Music by Brassville.